You go out to dinner, people don't agree. You like this, I like that. You kind of ascribe that to me like maybe I'm not sophisticated or I have like some moral problems that I don't understand good food. But what people don't understand is we actually perceive things differently. We all look differently and that has to do in part with how we're born and it has in part with what we do, with what we have, you know, hair short, hair long, and it's just the same for a sense of taste. There are inborn differences in genotype, so there's proteins that sense the sugars on our tongue that send the message to the brain, and some people have protein, there's not as much of those proteins or they're misshapen, and those people actually don't perceive as much sweet from sugar. So let's, okay, so we got our four people and they're having dinner, say, okay, so they lick their like taste profile, genetic profile, we see these different patterns. So one thing is people that are very sensitive to the phytochemicals, the bitter compounds and salad greens, they might find salads, certain kinds of salad greens to be very bitter. So we're steering those people off the French salad and we're steering them to a sweeter vegetable like a carrot or a potato or something that doesn't have those particular bitter profiles. So the first course, you know, is sort of a salad for some and maybe soup for other people. And also for wine, some people are very sensitive to some of the bitter compounds in wines. So we might steer you off to a sweeter Riesling and, and some people off to something that's a little bit more different sensory profile. Your receptors are on your tongue and they're responding to whatever you throw in your mouth, right? But it turns out that those receptors may have been repurposed to do that, but their original purpose was in other parts of the body.